Welcome to another edition of the Gridiron Report. I'm Jared Johnson, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the 2024 Texas Tech football schedule. And I know it seems like a random time to be doing that, but uh, you know when the schedule was originally released, I did do a story and uh, had discussion with uh, Texas Tech fans on Inside the Red Raiders, um, but I didn't do a video. I thought this is prime off-season talk. Let's look at the schedule, break it down, I'll give my record prediction. Um, go a little bit into the games. It It's still a little early to like break down rosters and all that. And honestly, pundits such as myself don't really know as much as they as people say they do about the other team's rosters. Like I know Texas Tech's roster. I feel like I know it really well. I spent the time to do that. And I've talked with other people about some other teams, but I don't feel like I really know them. Um, that's why some of the preseason polls, some of the predictions could be so out of whack because uh, it's a lot of word of mouth instead of knowing what you see because there's only so much time in the day right but it's a fun exercise it's june not a whole lot going on now there is recruiting going on and um i talked about offensive line recruiting um in one of these videos i've talked about quarterback uh just the quarterbacks in general on the roster uh, in recent days and i do have a breakdown of recruits double digit recruits visiting texas tech for official visits this weekend uh, who's visiting, scouting reports on them, when Tech offered, um, what the situation is with those recruits uh, in terms of where Texas Tech stands and then who else is in the mix and decision dates and commitment announcement dates and all those things on that story. Uh, you know, Texas Tech hosting uh, double-digit recruits on official visits this weekend. So check that out. But let's, let's dive into the schedule. I think it's a good schedule. It's one of the uh, – on paper, one of the easier schedules, tech, Texas Tech, or uh, it sets up right for Texas Tech uh, that I can remember in quite some time, maybe even 2013, when they got off to that, I believe, 7 0 start. Uh, Texas Tech opens at home uh, against Abilene Christian on August 31st. That is a, a 6 30 uh, p.m. Central Time. That game will be televised on ESPN. Plus. And that's an exciting game for one reason. Well, two reasons. One, you're open in the season. That's always uh, you know exciting. Uh, but another reason, the south end zone renovation, just the, the renovations going on uh, in and around the Jones with the uh, football program. The south end zone, by all accounts, is expected to be completed. They have that live camera you can watch. Uh, you know, the construction and everything. They've been doing updates. Robert Giovanetti there at Texas Tech's done a really good job of providing um, consistent updates uh, on the south end zone. So it should look great. You know, I was out there in spring, um, I don't know, weeks ago, uh, a little bit after that, and checked that out. And it looks, it looks great um, in terms of what it's going to look like, the new double T scoreboard, all that new video board. It's, it should be should be great. So that should be exciting. And Texas Tech should win that game against Abilene Christian. No disrespect to ACU, but uh, yeah, Tech will be heavily favored and should win that game. Next game, first road game, they go to Washington State, to Pullman. Uh, Red Raiders should, again, I think should be not heavy fav heavily favored, but they should probably be favored. Um, if not, I mean, I can't see Washington State being big favorites uh, for sure. Maybe a push, push them, uh, but I think there's a good chance Tech will even be favored on the road there. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that's a guaranteed win. It could be a tough place to play, kind of an outpost a la like Wyoming last year. But uh, if Texas Tech wins that game, it could um, catapult the Red Raiders to a really good start. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and count that as a, as a win. <clears throat> that is a 9 p.m. Central time uh, kickoff, and that will be televised on Fox. Now, game three is back home against UNT. It's interesting. I, Tech should be heavily favored. They should win that game. Uh, but North Texas historically has had success uh, against Texas Tech. I don't remember what the career head-to-head uh, -head is, but I think it's it maybe even tied 4-4 four to, four to four or something like that. I remember even during the Spike Dykes era, uh, UNT won a couple of games where Red Raiders you know, should not have lost. Um, but they did. UNT won those games. One in Lubbock, I think, and one in uh, Denton. So I think Texas Tech will win. I fully expect the Red Raiders to win, but that is something to note, just the history of upsets uh, with, with North Texas um, over the Red Raiders. So 
I'm predicting a 3-0 start in non-conference. And this is weird to say, but Texas Tech opens up Big 12 play with two home games against Arizona State on uh, Saturday, September 21st. And the all the conference games have yet to be determined. Uh, they won't be until the season in terms of kickoff times and TV designations. But Arizona State is down. Um, they're rebuilding. Red Raiders should win that game at home to move to 4-0. and Cincinnati, obviously they've had some really good uh, teams here relatively recently, um, but I, I don't think they're expected to have a monster year. Texas Tech at home should move to 5-0, and and that's interesting because a 5-0 and star would be obviously terrific, very different from last year. Um, then you go to Arizona, and – Arizona's a ranked team, returns a lot of talent. I know there's been some coaching changes, um, but in Arizona's tough to, a tough place to play at. So I, I'm going to count that as a loss. I remember the Red Ridgers went out there four or five years ago and not even like a really strong Arizona team uh, behind a raucous crowd uh, really put it to Texas Tech. So I, I think – uh, I think the Wildcats win that game. Texas Tech falls to five and one. And what's interesting about that is – uh, that's the first of two buys after that game uh, for Texas Tech this year. I, it's been quite some time since Texas Tech has had two buys in, in one season, but that's a perfect middle of the season. Texas Tech off to a 5-1 start, tough road loss to uh, you know, at least a preseason uh, ranked team. I, I think that's a, that's a very good start for Texas Tech, that would be. And you come back off your buy and you host Baylor. Now, uh, uh this is by no means, I'm not saying chalk this up as a win, but I don't expect Baylor to be that great. I think David Aranda might be in trouble in Waco. I know he's won a Big 12 title, um, but they've had some down years. The recruiting hasn't been terrific either. Um, and I think there's a – David Aranda needs a, a big season, I believe. Um, but I don't know if he – I don't know if the Bears are going to be able to produce that. And I think Texas Tech at home – Moves to six and one with a maybe even a convincing win over Baylor. Up next, October twenty sixth, Texas Tech travels to TCU. Yet another in state conference rival. TCU, you know, two years ago, of course, went to the national championship game. I know they got drubbed in that game, but it was a terrific season for the Horn Frogs last year. Took a big step back, uh, struggled some, especially compared to uh, uh, going to the national championship. Uh, but I think they could bounce back and have a pretty good year. Um, what that means, what the win total is, all that, I don't know. Um, but I think they will be better. Uh, I think they'll be tough, especially there in Fort Worth. I know there'll be a lot of rib, well, as long as TCU doesn't block them and all that. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of rib raiders on hand there in Fort Worth still, but a tough place to play uh, for Texas Tech still. And uh, I think the Horn Frogs win that game. So Texas Tech falls to – what would that be? Six and two after that. So two thirds of the way through, six and two, pretty good start. Uh, then they go to Iowa State. So back to back road games right here in consecutive weeks. Um, and this is a November game in Ames. Now I don't know how cold it's going to be on November second, um, and you know, obviously what time they're going to they're going to play and uh, kick off the game and all that. But it's a tough place to play. Um, Texas Tech has won there. I think what two years ago they won there. Um, but on paper, looking at this, not that Iowa State's great or anything like that, but I'm chalking this up as a loss. I think Iowa State wins that game. The Red Raiders fall to six and three on the season uh, after losing back-to-back -back road games uh, in conference there. And then they go back home to the Jones uh, to face Colorado. Colorado, um, they have some talent on the team. Obviously, a lot of attention with Deion Sanders being the coach. That should be exciting um, in Lubbock. Now, Shadur Sanders, their quarterback, is good. They have some really good talent on the team. Um, but I don't know how deep they are. This roster, at least from afar, I mean, not being a Colorado football expert, but from afar, it appears the roster is not built for the long term in an individual season or over multiple seasons. So I can see them being really good, kind of like last year early on, but then struggling down the stretch. This is a, a – November 9th game, so late in the season, in Lubbock. I like the Red Raiders to win that game, to move to 7-3 and three with two regular season games remaining. Uh, up, they'll have their second bye week after that game over uh, game against Colorado. 
Uh, and then they return to action in Stillwater against Oklahoma State. It figures to be good, as usual, under Mike Gundy. Um, that's a Saturday, November 23rd uh, kickoff in, in Stillwater. So I like Oklahoma State to win that game. I, I think Texas Tech can win. They've shown even recently after Oklahoma State dominated the series for like a decade, Tech won a couple of games, one in Lubbock, one in Stillwater. So it's possible. Um, but just on paper, I think Oklahoma State wins that game. Red Raiders fall to seven and four with the regular season finale remaining. It is a home finale, senior day. Like I said, regular season finale against West Virginia. Um, they're at the Jones. Texas Tech, it's an opportunity to win eight games, and I think they do. I think they get it done. I think West Virginia, they had a good season last year. They beat Texas Tech in a close one in Morgantown. I think Tech could have won, should have won that game. West Virginia made the plays in order to win that game, so you got to give them credit. But I think, um, and they're different teams now. They have different players, of course. Uh, but I I do think Texas Tech gets it done at home to move to 8-4, and four, finish 8-4 and four in the regular season, and probably get a good – uh, you know, bowl game, maybe Texas Bowl or something like that uh, off of that. So I think that'd be a good season. Now, you know, I mentioned the buys. Every game's on Saturday. I think seven games are at home, which is great. Um, I think they get off to a hot start uh, and, but then, and then finish, you know, winning two of their last three games. Uh, so I think it's a good schedule on paper. Uh, you don't play Utah. You don't play Kansas State. I, mean, I think it's a really, uh, you don't play BYU, especially there. Um, I think that's a good draw for, for Texas Tech. Um, I think it's feasible they win more than eight games. Uh, there's Texas Tech fans screaming at me, watching me, you know, uh, you think they can win more than eight. Well, I, I have some concerns with quarterback in terms of health of Baron Moore. We already talked about that in a previous video. He looks good. I hope he stays healthy. And he's very successful. All that could happen. If that happens, yeah, Tech could win more than eight games. I also have some concerns in terms of offensive line. Um, what's the ceiling with the offensive line? What's the real depth of the offensive line? Uh, secondary has a lot of potential and pretty good depth, actually, in terms of talent, but not a ton of experience. So I, those three concerns have me uh, stopping at eight wins. And, and when looking at the schedule. Now, if things go for the worst, they could drop to maybe only six or seven wins. You know, quarterback uh, health problems, offensive line doesn't come together, secondary doesn't ever really reach its potential. Maybe they're a year away or something like that. Uh, so there's some things up in the air, but for me, knowing Texas Tech's roster, looking at the schedule, I think it's an eight and four regular season, which would be a great season. So. Well, that's going to do it for the schedule. Uh, maybe this will change as I get close, as we get closer to kickoff. Uh, I get a better feel again uh, during fall camp for Texas Tech's roster. But for now, that's going to do it. Thank you for watching, and until next time.